This jack is jacked. Ouch. That's a big expense. It's over $1,000 to replace this jack. You want to keep an eye on this edge here sealed because when it opens. So, so we have a potentially another oh, jack a, issue. Uh, I would guess it's a slide drill. Oh, a slide issue. They don't want you to use it, so I don't tell a lot of people about it, but I use drill. Oh, wow. Yikes. Well, you're finding all kinds of things. I found the only RV tech in Florida that, that's actually looking for more business. <laughs> I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.life. It's that time of year again, our annual or semi-annual RV inspection. We're due to head north here soon, so it's time to make sure the RV is in tip-top shape. And of course, to pull out our list of things that need to be fixed. I actually found a great mobile tech with seven years of RV experience here in Florida. And uh, Dave is great. And wow, he found a lot more issues than I was aware of. Plus, he let me record him so I can share all of his RV tech secrets with you guys. He even told me about some common issues with Grand Design RVs. So this is kind of a rare occasion. A lot of RV techs don't let you record them. So this guy said yes, and I'm gonna share all of it with you right now. I think the only thing I'd be worried about is your back corners and the front edge. Okay. It's not like you need a complete, complete roof reseal. Just a little bit will do it. And uh, do you recommend like a roof cleaning at all? I mean, is it? I mean, it's not perfectly clean, but it doesn't look as bad Definitely as some of not them bad, yeah. that, that I've seen. It's, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, that's personal. It's pretty good. You got the good solar panels. Yeah, you got solar on your van. Do you yeah. camp in that as, as I, well, or? I charge my electrical cordless stuff, and I have a refrigerator in there. Oh, okay. I keep cold water. Okay. <laughs> it's hot down well, here. you're the first <laughs> RV tech that's shown up with a, with a van like that. <laughs> yeah. that. It's really nice having an inverter in there for charging cordless tools. And, oh yeah. And it, I just leave the fridge on all the time, and I always okay. have cold water when it's hot here. If you don't have a large solar and battery setup, how do you power your off-grid camping adventures? Let's face it, a fun camping trip rides on power. You need power for all of the fun stuff. No power, no fun. And who gets blamed when there's no power? That's right, you do. That's why we use the Power Pack Blue Eddy AC180 to power up all our fun and emergency needs. This has a whopping 1,152 watts of power, or 36 amp hours. Cheers. Grab a cold beverage here and let Blue Eddie charge everything up and we'll get back on the trail. Hey Tom, how do I charge my phone on this? You just lay it on top. You just lay it on top? Yes. Okay. Oh, is there room? You got so much stuff charging here. Uh, yeah, it can handle it. Oh, wow. Cool. Wireless charging. Crazy. Wow. But does it have enough power for the most important camping task? Fresh coffee in the morning. Time to make the coffee. Yes. Good morning. How many appliances can the Blue Eddy AC-180 run? Let's find out. And you can make your favorite blend. Also our uh, grill replacement here, the sous vide. Let's see what kind of a draw that has. Oh, about 900 watts. But can it handle the air fryer? This is a beast when it comes to power needs. Let's find out. Wow, look at that. It is actually pulling out around 1,700 watts. This thing will put out 1,800 watts. So you can literally take your air fryer on your camping trip, handle all of your cooking needs. 
campgrounds and RV parks are notorious for losing power even without bad weather. I've actually lost power in this modern RV park twice. And it's storm season. That's right, hurricane, tornadoes, severe thunderstorms. You wanna have backup power for this. Here's another thunderstorm coming right now. I've never seen a portable battery charge this fast. It went from 30 to 50% power in less than 15 minutes. It went from 30% all the way up to 80% power. That's a full 50% charge in 37 minutes and all the way up to 99% power in less than 52 minutes. And it hit a 100% charge in one hour. You can also charge it with your vehicle and also solar panels. And some of the best campsites don't even have power because that's why you're off grid. You wanna be away from everything. This right here can take care of all of your emergency power needs. It can even power up your CPAP machine and actually take it back home and you can use it at home if you have an emergency. Before you head out this camping season, make sure you have a Blue Eddy AC 180. You can find a link down in the description and the pinned comment to get yours. I'm uh, gonna do these myself, but I've got a couple of soft start units for these two air conditioning okay. units. I've got one in the bedroom AC right now. And have you had any experience with soft starts at all? Or Yeah, people like them. I know we've talked to, sometimes some of the manufacturers don't like you to put them on. It must be hard on the compressor. I don't know exactly what the reasoning is, but when you have three of them, I don't think it's a bad idea, though. You... Yeah, we just got a big uh, lithium battery upgrade. Uh, I plan on doing some dry camping or boondocking here um, when I take off. And well, I figured that definitely help you. Uh, that doing that would be would be good yeah, so starting it off an inverter yeah we'll glue that in place before it locks out on you yeah it's like all these <laughs> loose things on rvs it's like <laughs> yeah, they get bounced on the road pretty good the, the, the constant earthquake right yes we'll glue that in place and a couple little seams to seal okay but your roof is in good shape so I don't know how long you plan on keeping this camper, but there is a coating called Lifetime Roof Coating, and he adds fiber to his self-leveling, and it seems to hold up really well. Oh, really? Um, like, it's a little more expensive, but the lifetime of it makes it cheaper. Okay. So I think the guy's called the RV Roof Guy, the, uh, that you order it from. But it, it seems, I've used some of it, it seems to hold up really well. Just starting to crack and open. That might even just be a scratch. Oh, okay. But I like these corners right here. So peel it, see how it's not attached. It's just kind of sitting on there. Oh, wow. So I'll peel that off and clean that up and okay. get that screw head covered there. Yeah, the, the sun is hard on these uh, roofs, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, hard on seals, roofs, awnings, everything. Yeah, I've, I've seen some people spend like $10,000 like on a special coating, you know, and they just do the entire, they, they get their RV delivered and immediately, Code it. you know, do that. Yeah. I guess it's a lifetime warranty, I think, or something. Yeah, there's and, a place out of Tampa that does that, I think. It seems to have good results from what I've seen, though. Right, it, look, it looks nice, but... I mean, how often do you get up here and look at your roof? Yeah. <laughs> I guess... More than I want to. <laughs> you would recommend always installing solar with a gap uh, here. Yeah, it's way better on the roof, yes. We've seen some people have some crazy uh, solar, like, above their air conditioning. Yeah. So they build a, you know, a rack that you know it's above their air conditioning so they can basically do the entire roof it's common so. on vans like because they run out of room okay right so yeah you don't have as much room <laughs> oh yeah well, that's looking pretty bad yeah we'll, we'll clean it up and redo it all right good deal so dave you were talking about the jack and it, it looks like it's actually bad it looks like it's weeping at the top yeah we'll clean it up and look at it okay but these orange hoses have a trouble with the coating the coating comes off, then they start weeping, but that doesn't appear to be the case in this one. So potentially replacement of that jack. Yeah, 
Um, wow. We'll get a we'll get a good look at it before we condemn that though. You want to keep an eye on this edge here is sealed because when it opens, the water runs in and then through and into here, and these floors don't have a long life once they get water in them. So you said this is a common issue yes. with momentums. I see it quite often on these. Really? Okay. We have a lot of grand design owners that watch our channel, <laughs> so. Yeah, just keep an eye on this edge, this seamed edge here. Okay. Because the water goes in and then it, you'll see it starting to, you'll see a water pattern start developing out here. So just, you, re you've got a little bit right there. Reseal it? Yeah, just gotta reseal this edge. Okay. There's butyl behind here, but it still seems to wick water through it somehow. So I always, whenever I deal with these, I always check that. That's your floor line, so we want to seal that. So that would allow some water intrusion right That's there. Possible. I'm probably not, but we'll seal it up anyways. And, and with that uh, piece that came off up there, does that is that possible for water intrusion? Yeah, because it's that's what covers your screw heads. It just helps keep the water off the screws. Okay. They're screwed through butyl, so okay. it's not real likely they'll leak, but it doesn't hurt to have it on there. Did you want me to order that for you, that pinch molding? Yes. That's what that's called that goes in there? It's called screw covering. I call it pinch molding. Is there something with propane that attracts bugs? Well, we get all these cobwebs and stuff in there. Is... I don't know. Probably that stinky smell. I, I don't really know. <laughs> wow, what is that? That's Oops, this brake cleaner. Okay, that is cleaning it up really good. Here, I've had some people comment that they thought my hydraulic fluid was getting low. But, you know, obviously it's going to be low when, when they're all ran out yeah i think it looks pretty close so when you run everything back in it'll probably be full again yeah i think it's and i don't know where the full mark i think it comes to about right there you know if there's a yeah, what, what the, right there should be your, your fill line this this seam okay so, so you might be a little so bit i could be down an inch or something. a little bit yep. and what kind of fluid goes in here anyway ATF. you know here's something that i occasionally get uh jack popping uh, have you, have you, normal. okay. All these big trailers, I hear that all the time. And if you know any of the other things about servicing these, I don't remember if there was some kind of like a, a chamber that, that, that builds up soot or something in that the, needs to be emptied or. In the muffler there is, and they tell you that, but I've cleaned a bunch of them and most of the time they're not. There's nothing in them? If you're running them hard, I don't think that that happens. You know, if you're using them under load, I think they stay clean. It's when the guys, okay. they're not, like they're just charging their batteries with them or something. Sure. If they're not under a big load, that must set them up. Okay, yeah, for, uh, fortunately with this kind of a battery setup, the generator doesn't get much use. Yeah. <laughs> you, run it, you run it at least once a month though, right? I, you know, I haven't been, but that is a good tip that I've been told that you need to, you know, do that regularly. Yeah, it's, it's keeps them working a lot better. Okay. The, the gas ones, they um, they gum up and sit up and you don't see it with the propane, but the gas ones have, have issues with that. Oh, wow. It's a foam seal in there and it's not sealing. Oh, shoot. Well, that's why I, I love it when you guys come out because you see all these things that I, I'm not gonna see. I was noticing that that piece up there for the, the back uh, awning you had mentioned, but I can see it sticking out right there, that yeah. little, I'll see if it's, what do you call that? Uh, we call it gimp. Yeah, gimp. it's sticking out back here. So. Gimp. <laughs> I'll just uh, put some black silicone on each end of those so they can't pull back and forth because that one was actually walking out. Okay. So we'll just glue them in place so they can't do that. The awnings are pretty new. We had one fold over. Your <laughs> uh, <laughs> slide topper is coming unattached right under here. Under there where that seal is. Okay. It's starting to cock like this. A couple of those screws must be starting to pull. If you look at, look oh, at it. Oh, I see. If you look at it from the end, you can see the angle it's at. Okay. It's coming off. Yikes. Not a big deal. Just gotta run the slide out in. Okay. Take the screws out. I'll add some bigger screws to it with some Okay. Epoxy, and then we'll just have to leave it in for twelve hours. Okay. Or we can or we can run the 
slide topper out, pin it, and then you can run it back out so there's not tension under it, and then you can okay. pull it in when it dries. Probably be better for you, that way your room's out. It's not a big deal. I'll yeah. Just, I'll just pin some slack in the slide topper. Okay. And then after a day, you can pull that pin. Well, you're finding all kinds of things. <laughs> you don't have to run it much. Just run it down like an inch and then up an inch a couple times. and we'll Oh, see okay. It. You know, maybe I'll just hit the auto level yeah, because uh, it's slightly... I've had to do it a, a second time already, but I think it's still leaning just slightly. Why is it? Wow, that went up a lot. Yeah, it did. I, I was, I'm a little surprised at that because <laughs> it's, it's been leveled twice <laughs> already. So, <laughs> but it was leaning forward still. Do, do you hear that a lot where it's got to be re-leveled? Yeah, they. I mean, they're gonna settle a little bit. Um, okay. I don't know how long you've had it here, but just raise. You can just raise and lower the front a couple times, just a little bit. Oh, okay. See if we can get it to. Well, it's nothing super obvious, that's for sure. I almost feel like it's coming from under this cap, though. Yeah, it is coming from where now this this is bolted on this top piece is bolted onto this cylinder okay and it's seeping right here right in this back corner so i'll have to see i'll get a picture of the jack and see what they say about rebuilding these yeah lippert's got a got that number you can call oh, there they've yep. got people you can talk to like yeah they're very helpful so you found another leak here well, yeah it's leaking up at the top and then it's weeping out of your seal here which not bad, but you don't really want any leaks. So are you thinking it's it's a bad jack or is it could yeah, just they're be... rebuildable, so we'll get with Leopard and see what they say for their sometimes it becomes a time frame issue. So I called up the Lippert support helpline, which I've used many times in the past. I'll put that number down below in the description. You can use that to quickly get help from a live US-based tech support person. They were able to quickly identify the front jack, the right part number, and verify that it was in stock. They started a case number that I was able to give to my mobile tech. He was quickly able to contact wholesale warranties and get that over a thousand dollar part covered and get it on order so it can be replaced. How awesome is that? And I've mentioned wholesale warranties before. That is something I would highly recommend for your new or even used RVs. They'll cover RVs up to 20 years old. So I'll put a QR code right here. You can scan it, go check out wholesale warranties. Plus there'll be links below in the pinned comment and description. But man, issues happen with RVs. Stuff needs to be fixed. And it's great knowing that they are covered with wholesale warranties. That all looks good. Yeah, slides are probably a, a big deal for issues, huh? Yeah, they all let water in. Your seals look like they're in good shape, so. Yeah, I haven't had any water come in. I mean, I've, a previous RV, you get a storm or something, <laughs> blowing wind in one side and coming in the slide, but. Uh, blowing water in with it, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's pulling down? Yeah, it's ripping right along where they attached it. Must be going down the road, this is doing this. And it's starting to rip loose there. Is that something you can <laughs> yeah, fix? I can, I'll can. i get some window urethane and just glue a strip along there to keep it from ripping. Either that or we could put a wider, I can get a wider strip and we can put a wider strip on. Yeah, because I'm getting ready to put uh, some thousands of miles on, so... Maybe I better get a wider, get an inch and a half wide piece of aluminum and we do that right there and right there and right over there. Okay. But you don't want the wind getting in there and then you'll... You know, and that reminds me, it seems like I saw a piece of 
something dangling down in the back here somewhere. I don't know if it's a piece of tape or... You got open back there too, I can see from here. Above your axle, it's tore. Okay, yeah. And then we'll just tape that up. Okay. Yeah, I know they make some good tape for that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's actually, yeah. I don't use what they tell you to use, but... Oh, okay. I like the rough tape better. Yeah, I, I have a roll of something. I've taped something up back there before. Yeah, you got some oil seeping out from underneath. At one time, you must have had a leak back there. You said oil back here? Yeah, there's oil on that underbelly right there. Could that be hydraulic fluid? Yeah, that's the only oil I can think of in here. So, so we have a potentially another oh, jack is. issue. Uh, I would guess it's a slide drill. Oh, a slide issue. Well, you know what, um, I, it, Lippert did replace this rod right here, this one? yeah, and, I, and they said it was a leak. Okay, well that's probably residual oil, So that, nothing looks fresh. It, okay, so it could just be left over? I think it's probably left over oil from when they were in there. Okay. It's hard to get all that oil, I mean it's hard to clean all that stuff. Okay. There's insulation in there that can absorb oil on that. Okay. <laughs> So we're pretty safe because it looks like it's it's old. It looks old to me, yeah. I don't see nothing fresher. Okay. So I wouldn't maybe just check it once in a while, but I wouldn't be extremely worried about it. Well, that's good. I, <laughs> one jack uh, is enough to yeah, that's enough. have to troubleshoot. Um, a, what are you lubing this with? Yeah, the oh. CRC? Yep. Okay. That's the right stuff? Yep, that's what they tell you to use. I actually, um, they don't want you to use it, so I don't tell a lot of people about it, but I use dry graphite. It sprays on like a paint, it dries, the dirt doesn't stick to it. Dry graphite? A, yeah, Tractor Supply sells it. They use it on mower decks so the grass doesn't stick to mower decks and stuff. I've had good luck with that, and that's what I use in my hitch plates too. Okay. Because you can spray your fifth wheel plate with it or your ball, and you don't have to worry about grease and oil. Well, Dave, you're, you're doing such an awesome job. We're going to end up giving you lots of business. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of your company again? It's D&G RV Repair. D&G. Okay, out of Arcadia, Florida. Yes, sir. We got a lot of viewers that come down here every, every winter, so... <laughs> That's good. We will put your contact information down in the video description as well in the pinned comment. I found the only RV tech in Florida that, that's actually looking for more business. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got five-star reviews on Google. That's also a, a very extremely rare thing. Hit that subscribe button for part two of this video or you can scan this QR code right here because Dave is coming back to finish the job and he's sharing more insider RV tech secrets with you guys and he finds more issues wrong with our RV. So we'll see you in that video and you can check out this video right here right now.